So I thank God for uh, His grace and then uh, I have to personally thank uh, Dr. Sam for giving me uh, this opportunity uh, to uh, possibly meditate on this passage and then to share what I learned with you. So uh, some of you might have seen me and know me for a long time while the other, while some others might not have actually have much interaction with me. So uh, the title, no actually. <laughs> so the title that I chose for today's passage is What Do We Know? And then how does it change our life? And then the keepers I chose is a uh, uh, chapter 5 verse 13. I wrote these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So, uh, so some people might not know me, so, and uh, since the title is What Do You Know? So I, what do we know? So I'm asking you, I start this today's uh, presentation by asking you, what do you know about me? So you can go to the next. So what do you know about me? So uh, <laughs> I'm uh, Joseph Jung, or many people call me Jo Jung, and uh, I'm a uh, PhD candidate in uh, nuclear engineering at UBI, and uh, I'm a husband of a woman, <laughs> <laughs> of a baby, or baby soon, actually. And then I have, I have been in this ministry, <laughs> Deep Church in Christ, for four years. So all the information that I listed here basically have defined who I am, my, uh, my identity. Well, however, if someone says that I'm the smartest or the most handsome guy in Arena, I wish I could. I think, and this sounds pretty reasonable, but this is not really true. <laughs> so I, was, I should say you, got a, you must got a wrong information on me. And then actually last year when I visited New Mexico, someone told me that I look like I'm almost 24 years old, so 25 now. But unfortunately, I'm way over 30 now. So, uh, uh, in order to know me, or in order to understand who I am, you must discern the right information from wrong information and take only the right one, right? And then you gotta do the same thing for Jesus, God, and for ourselves. So you can go to the uh, next slide. So today's question is, who do you think Jesus is, and who do you think yourselves are? So we can ask a similar question, and we can find actually a similar question in the Bible at Mark chapter 8, when the, where Jesus asked his disciple, who do people say I am? It's Mark chapter 8, 27. And then at the moment, the disciple told him that some people said Jesus is John the Baptist, and some people said Jesus is Elijah and one of the prophets. But Peter made his personal confession to Jesus that Jesus is the Christ. So many people have many ideas about Jesus. And who do you think Jesus is? And at the same time, we can ask the same question for our, uh, to ourselves. Who do you think you are? So for example, this is kind of even hard to pronounce. To pronounce. Existentialism is one of the recent philosophical movement. And then that philosophical movement lays its foundation on people's confusion in the face of apparent meaningless and then absurd word. So you can see the people, the person over here with a lot of confusion and anxiety, right? So basically that's the picture that this the philosophical movement describes a human being. So according to this philosophy, human being, human situation is characterized by anxiety and despair. And then each individual is completely and ultimately alone. And then they, uh, they have the absolute freedom. So no one cares him, and then he's the, the main of the life. But uh, on the other hand, according to Christianity, our identity is determined by God. And then those who accept Christ are considered children of God. So uh, in such a circumstance, it's good to uh, actually come back to the Bible and read the first John together. The book of first John gives us an answer about God, Jesus, and our identity. So John, the author of the book, described through this letter the true Jesus, the true God, and true ourselves in the old days at present. So I pray that through today's passage, uh, we may all correctly know Jesus and ourselves, so that we may have a new life with the assurance of Christian faith and salvation. So let me pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the uh, last worship service in 2013. May God help us to uh, know that you are the Son of God and then eternal life so that you can have a new life with the uh, confidence. I pray in Jesus' name.
Okay, so you can go to the uh, next slide. So I'll start, a, uh, start the first round with some background. The first round was written by a part around 19 to 91 at Ephesus, which is currently Turkey. And then what was the purpose of this book? So if you read it carefully, you can see uh, like some themes are kind of going over and over. And then allegedly some false teachings at the moment deceive and confuse people and even cause division among Christians. So for example, uh, the citizen is kind of hard to pronounce too. The citizen is an opinion especially associated with Nazism, Nazis, and then that it says that the Jesus has no human body and his death on the cross was nothing but just a fantasy. So according to this belief, Jesus' death and resurrection is not really important and his death on the cross has no correlation with our salvation. So in such circumstances, John wrote this letter to first help leaders correctly understand God and Jesus and have a fellowship with us. It's written in chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And to protect Christians from false teachings and idols, which is written in chapter 2 and verse 5, and then chapter 5, 21. So you can go to the next slide. So we have studied uh, first time, first semester this year. And so who is God? So we gotta know who God is and who Jesus is and who we are. So who is God? Written in First John. So I kind of chose like few themes. The so God is light, described in chapter one, verse five through ten, and God is righteous in chapter three, and God is love in chapter four. And Jesus, as the Son of God, He cleans us from our sin, which is John chapter one, or First John chapter one seven, and He become our advocate in chapter two, and He's the Savior of the whole world in chapter four. So therefore, we therefore we emit, I mean, so it says that we are cleansed by Jesus, and then Jesus is the savior of the world. So uh, we are we are saved by God, and then so now we are transformed from sinner to children of God by Jesus. So the first John told us to uh, love one love God and love one another, and we should not love the world and we should protect ourselves from false teachings and false teachings that deny Jesus is the Christ. So we should, so we should come to Jesus instead and confess our sin so that we may have, a, we may have the complete joy with him. So you can go to the next slide. So the first John, uh, the last part, this is the last part of the first John. In this part, uh, John concluded his book and then re-emphasized several important messages so they can be summarized in the following manner. So first one is we have the eternal life through the true son, Jesus Christ, verse 13 and 20. And God hears us in whatever we ask and protect us from evil one. You can go to the uh, next slide. So the first one is that we have the eternal life through Jesus Christ. Let's read together verse 13. Ready? Okay, start. I write these things to you for the in the name of the Son of God, that you may you know that you have the eternal life. And verse 20, ready, start. No, 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 So the first, we have the eternal life through uh, Jesus Christ. So as everyone knows, uh, we all die, right? And then there is no exception regarding that. So therefore, eternal life actually doesn't sound really uh, make sense to us. And actually no one in this world can either avoid death or the, solve the problem of death. So this great power of death means that the matter of life and death is actually beyond our capacity. And why do we die? The Bible says that the wage of our sin is death. It's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. So we, have, we, have, we die because of our sin. And we couldn't correct this problem for ourselves. Some of us might think that we are better than others, but our sinful nature basically remains the same no matter who we are. So, however, God sent His Son 
his one and only son, Jesus Christ, and had him die on the cross, so that our sin may be forgiven, and we may be cleansed, uh, we may cleansed from all unrighteousness. So we receive salvation not because we are qualified to do so, just as I deliver a message even though I'm not qualified to do so, or we are better than others on average. I'm not better than others on average. But God saved us from our sins, for He so loved us, uh, so loved us and he, uh, Jesus took the wage of sin, of all sin, not your sin, not my sin, but sin of the old world. So, and not only that, Jesus resurrected from the dead, showing that He Himself conquered the power of the death. So this internal life is a new, new and this is a living hope for every Christian who believes in Jesus. For example, Apostle Paul, he uh, endangered himself numerous times after he was changed by Jesus. He was stoned and almost dead, stripped and beaten and imprisoned several times. Not only that, when Paul was sailing for Rome, his ship, was, his ship got a huge storm at sea and he was almost drowned to death. So how could he endanger himself? How could he risk his life for this? It is because he saw the risen Jesus and he believed the eternal life, that which is a, not the life itself, but it's actually a new and living hope. Even the death cannot end. So can you go to the next one? So now we can ask the, the same question to us. Where is our hope at? And where is our confidence at? So we put our hope and worldly values, such as money, social position, or fame. And then recent research shows that the uh, recent generation, our generation, are focusing more on money, image, and fame than ever before. So especially since mid 20th centuries, so I, showed, I put this graph, I found this graph from one of the like, uh, research articles and put it over here. So from 1970s to uh, 2000, uh, the person, so since we are college ministry, so I try to find some information on college students, and this one shows that the percentage of the student who stated that yeah, the main reason for going to college is to develop a yeah, meaningful philosophy of life actually drops from 80% to 40%. While the purpose of, the purpose of obtaining financial gain increases a lot from 40% almost to, uh, to uh, 80%. And then I have, I, when I was preparing for this message, I actually asked this question to myself as well. And I realized that I have dream of being a very famous engineer and a research, researcher so that many a famous university or research lab become so eager to recruit or like invite me to their institute with a great fellowship. However, the reality was not the same as what I hoped for. And as I got close to the end of my PhD study, I found that the reality is actually completely different. Uh, and then uh, not even a few professors pay attention to my uh, the application, and I found that I have no place to go after the graduation. So I've been very frustrated because I was not what I hoped to be. However, through today's, me uh, through today's message, I found that uh, my hope is still rooted in those worldly values. And then I didn't, I didn't really appreciate the value that Jesus bring us. Uh, bring us. So those worldly, val uh, worldly values that we are pursuing are all passing away. On the other hand, the eternal life lasts forever beyond our death. So if we truly believe Jesus died for our sins and we are saved from the death, we can assure ourselves of the eternal life and then our life is now driven by the hope and promise of this eternal life. So, do you want this eternal life? Maybe I can ask. Oh, Grace, Missionary Grace clearly said yes, but let me ask someone else. Yes. Oh. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> Chin? Oh, okay, very good. So? No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. I have the same. I had the same question actually. So I have a two and a half year old daughter sitting all the way back over there. And then, do you know what my daughter hates most? Sleeping. Yes, she doesn't like sleeping. She hates the sleeping most. But so, so for her, the life is just full of joy. That she try to stay awake and then play as hard as possible. However, unlike my daughter, 
Sleeping is actually my favorite. <laughs> so as a uh, the head of the family and a uh, PhD student working hard for the graduation, I feel sometimes that life is not joyful, but full of hardship and the suffering. And even when someone mentioned that the life that lasts forever could be actually intolerable curse. So depends. Of course, it depends. But the, but the eternal life is not like that. Eternal life is blessing. Eternal life is joy because it's from it's the life of God. It's not our life. The eternal life comes from God, and this is what actually eternal means. We don't have a we don't have eternal life. The only God enjoys in eternal life. But in the fellowship with God, we share in this life of God, and this is what God have, uh, God has given us in uh, through His Son. So I pray that we may be able to uh, change our perspective on life so that we can anchor our life not on the, those worldly values but on the true value of eternal life. So we can go to the uh, next slide. Okay, thanks. So, uh, and the second one is that he hears and, pro and he hears whatever we ask according to his will and then he protects us from evil one. This statement basically reveals a relationship between God and us, which is very similar to the relationship between the father and children. So a father always carefully listens to uh, their children and try to respond with their request. But sometimes they cannot do it because the, their reque uh, the request from children may be too dangerous or too harmful to them. So if the relation works well, the, uh, the, for children they lack nothing because the father gives everything they need. And then for parents, for father, he always look after the children and protect them from all the possible dangers. So what is the foundation of this father and children relationship? It is love and trust. And then we can say the same principle can be applied to the relationship between God and us. God is not indifferent. God, is, God loves us and he cares about us. Once we know that God hears us, we can be competent and ask Him anything according to His will, regardless of how long it takes for us to get that answer. Okay, this, priest, this one priest sounds okay and sounds good, but what does it mean by God actually hearing us and protecting us in a practical sense? So, does that, does that protection mean that we will have a carefree life, no worry at all, such that we can buy whatever we want regardless of price or we can live a long life without any disease and or even car accident uh, but my uh, but as I went through the other uh, passage I found that basically God listens to us and protects us from e uh, from sins in that we may have a power to overcome the world so if I just uh, choose one random passage from the first Peter chapter 1 and 6 for a reason why we have been grieved by many trials. So, even, so actually we may be grieved. We may be tested by many trials in our life. However, the tri uh, trials and the suffering will end in our victory and God will strengthen, strengthen our faith through, the, uh, through those uh, suffering. So, when I, so again, the story of me and my daughter. So uh, when I look at my daughter, uh, when I look at my daughter, I found that she no. So, yeah, when I look at my daughter again, I found that she has no worry at all about what to eat and what to, uh, what to wear. This is not her worry, this is mom and father's worry. And then in the same way, so our life should be based on the confidence that God hears us and God protects us from evil one. And this is the matter of confidence and trust. So again, when I meditate on this passage, I found myself was uh, recently overwhelmed with the uh, worry about my future. So I will have uh, my second baby born this coming February, and I have a PhD. I haven't finished my PhD, and I haven't figured out uh, my next step after graduation, and then some other issues. So at the moment, I wanted, I wanted to secure my uh, life with the money and with a stable job. Of course, these are important. However, the problem was that I didn't believe God. I didn't believe that God hears my prayers and I didn't ask for His will. I thought that God would do whatever in His will, regardless of my wishes. And since then, I have broken off my personal relationship with God and tried to justify my own ways 
to secure my safety. So even though I call uh, God Father when I pray, my relationship with Him was that as if I'm an orphan and I couldn't really put my trust in Him when I pray. So uh, again, where is my confidence, where is my trust at, and where is your confidence at? So today's passage again says that uh, God listen to our prayers and our request. The world lies in the power of the evil one and we are so susceptible to be influenced by the power of the evil. But we, I pray that we all have the confidence so that our faith won't be never shaken by the power of the word. So you can go to the next slide. So I used this the, uh, diagram long time ago. Yeah, I, I think Grace remember that. Thank you. So uh, the worldly life is that we start our life with the birth, and then we went through the lot of we go through a lot of choices, but we will end up with death. But the Christian life is different. We start from birth, but through Christ we go to the eternal life. And then sometimes we want to go back to uh, the the life at the bottom, but God continues to hear us and He protects us, and we God gives the power to overcome the world. So. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So this is actually the conclusion part. I think I didn't spend that much time, but the verse, the 19 to 21, again we emphasize the identity of Jesus and ourselves. Jesus is the Son of God, the true God, and the eternal life. And through Him we are from God, and we are in Jesus Christ. So now is the conclusion. So what do we know through uh, this passage? The first one, we have the eternal life through the true Son, Jesus Christ. And again, God hears us in whatever we ask and protects us from evil ones. So if we have such assurance and certainty of faith and salvation, we won't fear in any circumstance, and then we will be a man of great courage. So the current world that we live, it has the desire of the flesh, such as money or pleasure-seeking life, or desire of eyes, like a sexual immorality, and pride in possession, like a power and pride, and then antichrist, antichrist that deny Jesus is the Christ. So um, this coming 2014, I pray that everyone may keep ourselves from idols, and that we may have, we may know the eternal life, and love and protection from God, so that we may have the complete joy as we stay at the beginning with Jesus Christ. So uh, this concludes the. Uh, the message, and then I'll pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for your Son Jesus Christ. Your Son Jesus Christ is Jesus is the Christ and the true God and the Son of God. And through Him, you gave us the eternal life. And then you are always coming up with us and protect us. And you hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to have this confidence in our life, so that our life is not driven by the world to the values, but your life is always anchored on the, uh, the solid love of the fellowship through you. Um, uh, may God be with all of us, and thank you for all the grace that you have given us, the thousand uh, you give, uh, give us and this year. May God continue to protect us and help us to have a uh, the wonderful fellowship with you that extends next year and then to the end uh, 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 and uh, through our uh, the eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.